Freddie's generally been fine. I think even last night he kind of gets the rap. But, I mean, four goals, two of them were tips. One was his own guy tipping it. One was just a brutal line change with a cross-crease play. And the fourth one, any person watching it live who didn't go, oh, when that play, when, when Appleton pulled it over and went around back the other way. That was after the Morgan themselves. Riley turnover? Yeah. Like, anyone is lying to themselves if they saw that coming. I know evaluating goaltenders after every single game and doing it for a couple of years in a row now, you, you start to learn how fans kind of litigate goaltenders. They'll go through every single goal. And I remember back when Garrett Sparks was the goalie and there'd be five or six goals against, and then you'd have fans say, oh, we can't blame him for four of those. You can't blame him for five of those. And at some point, even though it's a high quality chance, you want your goaltender to stop it. You want them to make some saves. And it can be frustrating when the other team's goalie just goes on an absolute heater and your goalie plays okay, you're going to lose that game. That's just the nature of the sport of hockey. But if, if we're measuring Frederick Anderson's performance this year, some of the best goaltending metrics, if we look at something like uh, goal saved above expected at even strength, he's still in the top 15 it's not where you'd like to see him earlier in the year. He was in the top 10. I think if you even went a, a week or two back, he was in the top five at even strength. But like you said, it's the penalty kill save percentage that's really dragging him down. Did you say he was ranked 30th out of 31 starters in PK save percentage? I remember someone pulled up a metric like that the other day. Yeah, Alec pulled that up for us. Um, but at five on five save percentage, he's eighth out of, 30, out of 31. Yeah. So, so that's where I'm thinking, okay, five and five is what actually matters. There's much more repeatability there as a goaltender. Frederick Anderson has a long track record of being a strong goaltender at five on five. I know that in Toronto, there are frustrations with the goaltending that you don't trust him in the playoffs. But at some point for me, I'm just looking at the larger body of work and I see, you know what, this guy's a top 10 goal in the NHL. I still think he's in that department. I'm not sure if he's someone you want to re-sign into his 30s, and I think the Leafs have already kind of decided that internally. But what are your thoughts on his overall play? Because I know that Frederick Anderson, his performance, the way he's playing from night to night tends to be a storyline in Toronto. Yeah, I think he's, I think he's just a generally solid, above-average goalie. I'm not going to sit here and say he's a stud, but he's generally been solid. He's generally been above-average. I know people look at games like last night and they say, you got to make a big save. And that's true. But I think some of that comes in moderation. He also, at one point, he stopped a Blake Wheeler breakaway to keep the Leafs within distance. I mean, that's making a save. What's the difference there? That's completely making a save. A lot of it's confirmation bias at the end of the day. You see what you want to see. You remember what you want to remember. Yeah, so people will look and say, well, he led in four, he's got to make a save. And I'm like, well, I mean, you can't really blame him on any of the four. And he did make a huge save to actually keep the game. You know when they made it 4-3 and there was a bunch of drama at the end? That was because Freddie stopped that breakaway to allow that to happen. So, you know, what? they're not paying him eight, nine, ten million dollars $10 million a year. He doesn't have a, a Jacob Markstrom-type contract. He's, he gets paid well. He's a good goalie, but you know, ultimately what you kind of touched on at the end of the day is, is the truth until he does something in the playoffs. He's been the second best goalie in every playoff series they've been in. And I kind of alluded to this yesterday. I, I mean, that would still be the case if they played the jets, it might still be the case if they play Calgary. Um, it could feasibly be the case if they play Montreal. I'm not saying it is, Straight up, Freddie has been better than Carey Price this year, this season so far. But we've also kind of seen that Carey Price can still kind of turn it on and Carey Price it a little bit at times. I don't know I if that's... I wonder how mind. much of that is overblown by a lot of people in the media who tend to remember what he was five years ago as opposed to what he is today. A, a hundred percent it is. I'm just saying if they got into a playoff series with them and Carey Price blacked out for a few weeks, would I be shocked? No. So what if Frederick Anderson blacked out for a week or two in the playoffs? These are things I, that happen sometimes. I would be Marco shocked. Andre Fleury was labeled as a playoff choker for how many years? Almost a decade, basically. I still kind and of. And then think he, he went. <laughs> well, he went on that absolute tear with Vegas, where he basically just dragged them to the Cup final. Yeah, that team was really good too, though. They were. That wasn't a bad randomly. team. I'm just saying that with goaltenders, sometimes they go on heaters, and sometimes 
it, it, it doesn't matter how well your team plays if the other team's goalie is better. So they've been in four, they've been in four straight years of him not. So I'm not saying that he can't or he won't. I'm just saying that it's been four times and he hasn't. So that's what people are going to judge him on at the end of the day, right?